Hello, today we're going to take a look at scanning using the Capture Geomagic Capture Scanner or also the HDI 120 scanner uh, and how we can scan metallic objects using those scanning systems. So before we dig into it, let's take a look at uh, some sample scan data and how we can go about scanning to better uh, capture these images. So to start off, uh, I'm using FlexScan 3D. Some people using or watching this video may be using SolidWorks, Capture for SolidWorks. Uh, so if you have a capture scanner, you're most likely using a Capture for some Geomagic product or SolidWorks. Uh, if you're using a 120 scanner, you will most likely be using FlexScan 3D for this particular process. Both softwares have the same functionality. Uh, there's a little bit more control in FlexScan 3D, but for the purposes of this video, uh, no features will be used that uh, is not in both softwares. So to get started out, uh, we're dealing with a oil pump this is a, a small block Chevy oil pump that we'll be scanning today. It's got uh, a <clears throat> fairly shiny uh, cast metallic surface, so it's uh, within still within the realms of scanning for the scanning system. When you're getting into scans that are with a shinier metal, say a uh, machine surface, those types of metallic surfaces are very difficult to scan. Uh, can, uh, some of them can still be scanned using the HDR process that we're gonna cover here in just a few moments, but most likely if the HDR process that we show in this video does not work, we'll want to use some sort of coating on the parts, a non-destructive coating such as talcum powder or Magnaflux. And we'll talk about that in the end of this video. So to get started, let's take a look at a few before and after shots of the scan data. So here in this file, we can see this is a before HDR shot and the type of data that you will get. Uh, then if we bring in the exact same shot but with the HDR turned on you can see that we're able to capture substantially more data in the exact same shot uh, and in turn uh, create better scan quality and uh, make a much easier to use setup for the end user. To use this scan function we'll need to come into our scan options inside of FlexScan and check HDR or just in the scan function of uh, Capture for whatever Geomagic product you're using, for instance Capture for SolidWorks, uh, you'll want to turn on the HDR in the settings uh, which is right there in your little scan box that will pop up when you're ready to scan your parts. So to use this function once HDR is turned on you simply scan as you normally would. So you'll just press your scan button, set your exposure the way you normally would set the exposure uh, on your part, and then go ahead and scan that part. Now one thing you'll notice is the system is going to begin scanning, and it's going to scan uh, several times. It could be five shots or so that it's going to take on the part. It may even take uh, more than that. So it's going to repeat that process a couple times. And you'll notice this uh, is going to take longer than your standard scanning function. So we'll let it go through this process. Uh, hopefully it has just one more image to do. Um, okay, it looks like it's doing a little bit more. and maybe six shots then. Or seven. Okay, yeah, so seven shots for uh, 
flex scan and most likely it will be the same number of shots inside of your capture for SOLIDWORKS, for example. Uh, once it's done with this, it's going to go ahead and process all that scan data uh, and then combine it all into one solid object, uh, which we can see here as represented by HDR or 335 HDR. So just as a recap, we can see the scan data that we were given before this and then also the scan data that was afterwards. And just to help show that off a little bit more, we'll turn the scan options off uh, and then just let it, or the HDR option off and then just let it scan. And we'll take a look at that image. And again, not a whole lot of data there. Quite a bit uh, better data here in this window. Okay, so uh, just a few other notes while we're on the topic of scanning metal surfaces. First off, one thing you'll notice when you're scanning a metal surface is the uh, underexposure and overexposure most of the time end up happening on the, you know, pretty much right beside each other on the surface. Well, you don't want to scan with underexposure and you don't want to scan with overexposure. So, what do you do to fix that problem? Well, uh, ideally you want to just find a happy medium. So, maybe somewhere in this particular uh, range is good. Uh, or if we can come back, say, to around 150, that's fairly decent as well. Uh, generally what I've found is the areas of the part that are perpendicular relative to the face of the scanner are just going to get overexposed quicker than other areas. Uh, and you just leave that as it is. As you work around your part, that area that is right now uh, overexposed because it's perpendicular to the scanner as I move the part will now become correctly exposed if we take this uh, cylinder here, for example. That will be correctly exposed now as opposed to when it was turned the opposite direction and ended up getting overexposed, which we can see there. And it's just a small spot, but doing this process uh, and moving the part around will allow it to um, in the end build out the correct data there so don't worry about it for this particular shot uh, because as you rotate around you'll get uh, the correct exposure from different areas finally uh, we'll talk about the spray that we we'll use so <clears throat> there's a few different options for spray and I'll go ahead and put some in front of the camera so you can see them the first option is this, uh, Magnaflux. So this is Magnaflux Spot Check SKD2 Developer Spray. Um, so it's not very easy to see with the exposure the way it is and unfortunately it's black and white so it tends to have the same problem that we saw earlier which is the underexposure and overexposure at the same time um, but this is spot Magnaflux Spot Check SKD2 developer spray uh, it's a non-destructive spray it uses titanium dioxide and an isopropyl alcohol deliverable and works very well, dries very quickly, and you can wipe it right off of any of your parts. I highly recommend this spray for whenever you're doing uh, scanning on metallic surfaces, especially a machine metallic surface. Uh, the other option we have is uh, very familiar. to many people, which is tenactin. Uh, so tough actin, tenactin, or any sort of uh, foot spray powder. 
works well. It does not work as well as the spot check. It does tend to clump up some when you're spraying it onto the part, but it is uh, very highly recommended for making uh, scanning metallic parts a whole lot easier. Just for example, I'll go ahead and spray one small area of the oil pump. And then we'll take a quick scan so you can see how much better the, the surface quality is and how much more data I can pick up when we use this. So I didn't spray a whole lot of it, but um, just in the areas really that it's visible you can see that's where it's been sprayed I used Magnaflux to spray this part uh, we'll go ahead and step up the exposure just a little bit get it looking nice and good and then we'll press scan um, and just do a little bit of scan quality comparison this is essential for shiny metallic parts uh, you know really highly reflective surfaces or any sort of surface that uh, is transparent. So just in that alone you can see the texture quality of the surface is much cleaner. It's much closer to that actual cast surface. Uh, it's not as over dramatized as well as uh, it's a little tough to tell from right here but as I zoom in you should be able to see a little bit better. This is a bolt this is threads on a bolt which uh, come in very clean the lines are very clean uh, so the Magnaflux or Tenactin is highly recommended when you're scanning metallic objects 